The first session of the day is focused on rewards and benefits strategies of the new normal. This session will help participants navigate their strides on new normal rewards and benefit strategies, including mental well-being as critical focus point in the overall plan. This very first session today will be addressed by Mr. S. V. Nathan, Partner and Chief Talent Officer, Deloitte India. Ms. Imrana Sheikh, Enterprise HR Head, India and South Asia, Johnson & Johnson. Ms. R. Mahalakshmi, Head HR, India. Mondelez International. Hello, everybody. Nathan here. Let me know when we can begin and then we can start. Sure, Mr. Nathan. We will start in another three minutes time. Wonderful. It's wonderful to have Ms. Manu Vadva, the program director. She is Chief Human Resource Officer, Sony Pictures Network, among ourselves. Ms. Vadva, would you like to unmute, please? Yeah. I said, uh, hi, everyone. Good morning, Nathan. Hi, good morning, Manu. Hello, Mahalakshmi. Hi, hi, Manu. Good morning, everyone. I think a minute or so we'd have Imrana as well. And uh, then I think uh, the floor is all yours, Nathan and Imrana and Mahalakshmi. So Maha, did you get a chance to read the note that I sent over this morning? So Nathan, whatever you send, how dare anyone not read? <laughs> <laughs> it's always a pleasure to read whether you post on social or whether you drop an email. So <laughs> how are you doing? Very well, thank you. Very well, very well. Team Aima, I just want to ensure, check and ensure are our conversations live or are we just talking to each other, please? It is live. Thank you. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> we are among the participants. <laughs> yeah, the participants. So, good hi, morning. everyone. <laughs> good morning, good morning. So, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Aima, a very warm welcome to all of you to this day two of IMA's HR playbook. The day is starting with a very interesting session on rewards and benefits, strategies of the new normal. It's a pleasure to have such a wonderful panel amongst us. The session chair and the moderator, Mr. S. V. Nathan, partner and chief talent officer, Deloitte India. We will shortly be joined by Imrana Sheikh, enterprise HR head, India and South Asia, Johnson & Johnson. We have with us, Ms. R. Mahalakshmi, Head HR India, Mondelez International. Mr. Jaykrishna B., President, Group HR and Corporate Communication, Amara Raja Group, is unable to join us as he's not keeping well. Together, we convey our wishes for his speedy recovery. We are also joined by Ms. Manu Vadhava, the Program Director. With this, I'll hand over the session to the session chair, Mr. Nathan. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, first of all, <clears throat> I'm told Monday is a day when we have the maximum heart attacks. Saturday is the is a day when we have the least. So, Aima, I really thank you for organizing this wonderful panel on a Saturday morning and really, really uh, grateful to you for that. I'm going to split this into a two or three parts. One, I want to tell you that I've just been bumped up as the moderator. Now, uh, this is where you may start to wonder what a moderator really does. So let me tell you a story. One day, a rabbit and a frog were hopping through the forest when all of a sudden they bump into each other. They both apologize and they exclaim that they are blind. The rabbit says that he has always been blind, so he doesn't even really know who he really is. So the frog says, don't worry, he has not been blind, and therefore he could possibly tell the rabbit who he was. So he says, okay. So the rabbit starts to run his pads all over the rabbit, and the frog says, okay, frog, uh, you're all furry. You have a little bobtail, long ears, 
cute nose. Uh, let me guess. You are a rabbit. The rabbit says, oh, that's marvelous. Let me try to do the same thing to you and try if I can tell you who you are. So the rabbit proceeds to run his paws all over the frog. Well, says the rabbit, you have a big mouth, bulging eyes. Your head is small, which, says, which suggests that your brain is really small. You have a bad voice. I know who you are. So the frog is all excited. He says, tell me, tell me, who, are, who am I? And the rabbit says, you are a moderator at IMA session on compensation and benefits. So with this, let me, let me uh, introduce our wonderful panelists. Hey, by the way, I've also been told that since it's just going to be the three of us, we've got to find a way to have me also in the panel. So I am a moderator and I'm also supposed to be part of the panel. So this, this is what one, one does when he tries to be a moderator come panelist. So in case I go completely off the, off the track, you know what's happening. So um, we have two really outstanding people who are on the panel along with us. And instead of really reading out the usual resume, here is what I would suggest that each one of them do. So you could talk about who you are. You could talk about which organization you represent and a couple of lines on what is interesting, which is not written in your bio. So go ahead. So Maha, can I turn this over to you? No, absolutely. I'm still kind of reeling under your uh, your frog analogy. Uh, to my mind, uh, Mr. Nathan, uh, what actually strikes me is Dashavatar, right? Uh, you're able to actually seamlessly go between moderator to panelist and, you know, maybe there'll be many more avatars we'll discover as we through, go through the day. So, well, I mean, maybe we need to kind of, you know, reframe it for 30 seconds. But <laughs> hi, everyone. You know, my name is Maha. Uh, uh, largely, my name is Maha Lakshmi. A lot of people just call me Maha, given the size, uh, you know, that I've now gained over the years in terms of kg or weight. Um, I want to really thank each one of you who are perhaps uh, passionate seekers and curious learners who've joined us on a weekend uh, early morning slot uh, to have this conversation on rewards. Uh, um, my name is Mahalakshmi. I lead up HR for Mondelez, uh, which uh, I think our facilitator was struggling to pronounce. But Mondelez, perhaps you'll all know by our brands, uh, which is Cadbury's and the entire range of Cadbury chocolates, uh, Perk, uh, Bone Vita, Oreo biscuits, uh, Tang, so on and so forth. Yeah. So we are an FMCG company. That's what I represent and I work in today. But over my career, I've worked both in consulting in telecom, in pharma, and now in, uh, you know, an FMCG company. And two interesting tidbits about me. I think uh, one, in one of my past lives, I was uh, leading rewards for two, three years uh, for, uh, for Airtel. Uh, and that has been a fascinating experience. And I was excited that we are having a, co a conversation for focused on rewards today. So that's one tidbit. The other tidbit is uh, that painting you see behind me has been done by me. So I enjoy painting. So maybe those are two I'll stop at right now and flip right back to you. Uh, Mr. Nathan, why don't you share something? I think you're famous. Uh, the world knows you, but we'd love to know something that the world does not know. You know, maybe you could share uh, some snippet from your life. It's very difficult after what you keep doing, Maha. First of all, let me say this, that Maha, if you think your name is long, so let me start. My name is, if you're all ready, Manargudi Naganatha Subramanya Vaidyanatha Ayer. So that's my full name. Call me Nathan. Um, a little tidbit about me is, I was raised in Kolkata, and they always used to call me Boidyo Nathan. And then my grandfather decided that enough is enough. He's got to get a name which is perhaps pronounceable by everybody. And so I was, the name got uh, changed to Nathan. And as long as I was in Cal, it was always SB Nathon. And I keep trying to tell them it is VSV Nathan, 
V for victory and they would chime. Ha ha, B for victory. But um, I can tell you this, this is, Calcutta is the only place where as soon as I alight from either a train or um, a plane, I would always touch Mother Earth and Jisko Kaya Dena, Mata Tekna. I would do that. That's the only place I do that because I think that that is my mark. That's my soil. Um, that's a little bit about uh, a tidbit that nobody knows. The other one is the fact that, well, Maha, I'm very, very, I'm Maha impressed with the paintings. The ones that you see behind, well, they are not done by me. The, the interesting part is all the painting in my house have been gifted by others. So Maha, hint, hint. I get the message. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the other thing is, uh, what can I say? I, I love cooking. I enjoy cooking. I cook for families and uh, my family and friends. So I keep rustling up new things and I'm, uh, I, I keep experimenting. I, I love to do that. And uh, background, I'm the partner and chief talent officer of South Asia. So uh, I worked in manufacturing. I spent a lot of time in manufacturing. I've spent a fair amount of time in services. I've spent time in uh, IT software and of course now professional services at Deloitte for the last 16 years. So it's been a, it's been a good ride. And um, with this, let me turn this over to Imrana. It was so exciting listening to both of you and you know uh, this fun introduction. So I was just thinking, wondering, what am I going to say? Um, so, um, I, you know, there's a joke in uh, amongst my friends and, and family members that if you need a babysitter, then you call Imrana uh, because that's how much I love children. Uh, so I can babysit anybody's children. Um, so that's one tidbit about me. Second is uh, I love baking, but I hesitate because I'm, I, I'm a diehard, I have diehard uh, sugar craving and uh, I kind of, you know, refrain uh, doing it because then I <laughs> eat quite a lot of it myself. Uh, but uh, uh, in terms of background, I've been, uh, I mean, I have, I have the, I had the opportunity of working with both manufacturing as well as service industries, um, have uh, the, uh, the diversity of experiences uh, in the automobile industry to advertising to uh, healthcare now and uh, before this uh, with consumer goods, which is Asian pains. So I think it's uh, overall uh, uh, very, um, when I look back and connect the dots, uh, I'm glad things panned out the way they did uh, because uh, that diversity does uh, bring in uh, different uh, perspectives and uh, different dimensions to my thinking. So uh, that's about me. Um, and back to uh, you, Maha. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's fascinating that, you know, I think there's so many uh, facets to us, right, uh, beyond where we work today, where we work in the past. And uh, what I'm really hoping is through the conversation today, you know, we find a way. Uh, and uh, Mr. Nathan, of course, is the Dashavatar mode of, you know, being the lead moderator. But our commitment has been uh, to him, uh, and this is for the benefit of the audience, that we're going to try the act of being moderator and flip some questions at him as well, given his uh, absolute... Uh, you know, diverse set of experiences, not only across industries, but perhaps across, uh, you know, seeing leaders and team members, you know, uh, figure their way through, through, uh, through rewards, benefits, and uh, through various stages that all of our businesses have been in as well. What do you think, Mr. Nathan? Oh, yes, Maha, I've got to say yes to this. And so let me start, Maha, with a question to you. Everyone has been talking about the pandemic, uh, the, the much abused word called the new normal. So going forward, we have to be prepared for a lot of these black swan events. That being the case in your experience, how can rewards, you know, this comp and benefits propel growth in the new normal? Uh, any, any insight on this? No, absolutely. And, you know, I'm going to take the liberty of saying some stuff, perhaps which is not limited to the new normal, because to my mind, 
rewards is one of the strongest co-pilots uh, both for the ceo and chro as any business thinks of propelling growth both in terms of peace time peace time as well as in crisis and to my mind there are perhaps four simple ways how rewards professionals can do a great job of this the first one is really knowing really closely you know what is the business trying to do and therefore what is the unique kind of skill that we really need to attract and retain so it's not just about mark to market pay but differentiating for skills that can propel growth uh, and retaining that critical talent by really you know playing on fixed pay variable pay benefits stock options on and so forth the second thing that rewards uh, leaders and the rewards uh, fraternity can do is to really be a strategic partner in terms of how do we review costs so that we can fuel that investment that we spoke about in point 1 right so how do we really review org workforce models including you know some experiments with gig that we've been doing at mondelez and we'll talk about it uh, if there's energy for it as we go along uh, and reviewing cost elements like cost of expatriation i mean in my in my hat in airtel we had a 20 plus percent reduction in overall people cost by how we really reviewed expatriation costs and how we used that to infuse it back into top 200 psp designs and you know uh, how can we therefore as rewards fraternities find the fuel that can then be propelling into investments uh, to grow the business and third uh, and the last one from my side rewards is a great partner as we look at embedding culture you know and this is not just about culture as perceived by benefits that show a culture of caring or wellness etc but also a culture of transparency performance and potential differentiation and a huge lever for inclusion we are so proud for example at mondelez that we have zero gender pay gap or the fact that we extend our parenting benefits to adoptive kids as well as well as same sex partners and a lot of this is because we are using rewards as a lever to really stand for the culture of inclusion so therefore to summarize uh, i would say it can be a fantastic partner today and in the past and in the future to attract and retain the right talent to propel growth to partner finding ways of finding the cost opportunities so that it fuels the investment and three being a partner for embedding a winning growth culture uh, in the organization excellent excellent thank you mahat thank you so much imrana this is to you this pandemic has been a great teacher makes us kind of think about wellness well being of our people more than ever before can you share something on wellness and benefits and what you have done or adopted and and the kind of impact that it has had absolutely thank you so much and you you are um, i mean so true it's so true uh, nitin the way uh, the pandemic has shifted the way we perceive health and wellness it's no longer uh, a nice to do it's a must to do and the even if if we uh, do we've been doing a lot of employee sentiment surveys like every week we uh, do an employee uh, sentiment survey and try to get, uh, measure the pulse of our employees and what we have realized is that the weightage that uh, health has got in the minds of employees have also got uh, you know increased multifold so keeping that in mind uh, and given the fact that even before the pandemic uh, we at johnson and johnson want have always dreamt of having the healthiest workforce on planet and our investment has always been in that direction with that purpose in mind um, the pandemic has just further accelerated it because the pull from the employee has intensified and uh, so what we some of the things that we have done is that uh, like everything else shifted in the virtual basis wellness also needed to shift in a in a virtual format so we had uh, before the pandemic we had a gym reimbursement um, uh, you know benefit just as an example and uh, people would get reimbursement for going uh, enrollment for gyms etc but we shifted it and said gym at home if you want to create a gym at home you can reimburse for it so making those kind of adjustments so that it keeps inspiring our employees to be focusing on their uh, health and wellness agenda 
The other is uh, we realized that while we doubled up our insurance, et cetera, but we realized that COVID also caused a lot of miscellaneous non-hospitalization expenses. So we introduced COVID care package because we realized that, um, so what, what was important during the pandemic was reading those said and unsaid needs of our employees and being proactive about it and being there for our employees. The third is about mental health. We read so much of the impact that mental health has uh, taken in this pandemic. So we uh, we kind of uh, increased the number of um, interventions we planned in the mental health space, uh, in in inviting uh, you know people experts from outside who can not just connect with the employees but also their families. Uh, so uh, all in all, what all of this did was that when we did our overall pulse survey at the end of it, uh, there's no wonder the, uh, the, uh, the growth that we saw in the uh, pulse score results were like tremendously high. Uh, but at the same time, if you just have a small open house conversations, you realize the emotions that employees pour out in, in the way they have experienced the care in this moment. And who knew that this pandemic would uh, last beyond a year? And actually, it's in the second year right now. And uh, we've, we have continued most of these things and are actually thinking about how do we really uh, uh, you know, make sure that some of these facets remain because we are not going to return back to the pre-pandemic mode. We are going to in a, be in a hybrid connected workspace environment. So uh, that's the thinking right now. So in summary, um, uh, we, we have been able to live uh, our uh, wellness agenda in action customized it to the evolving context and the evolving needs of our employees. And third, um, commitment to continue uh, evolving in the new uh, connected workspace that the uh, next few years are going to be in. Fascinating. Thanks for sharing, Imrana. And I mean, I, my reflection as I keep listening to you, and I think so many of us have been pivoting our wellness programs, and perhaps at the heart of it was really mm -hmm. listening very intently, you know, to our colleagues, uh, you know, and really seeing what is it that they are going through, you know, and uh, uh, what a beautiful mix, right? I mean, it's not just about pivoting to propel the growth business, both of our colleagues, you know, and, uh, you know, and we're looking intently so that we can keep pivoting all our rewards and benefits uh, programs, not just uh, wellness, you know, uh, to suit their needs. And I mean, I'm wondering, uh, you know, and it's a reflection. I'd love to hear your perspective, Mr. Nathan. For all the going to all these pivoting and all these reward and benefits initiatives, is our talent fully able to appreciate why are we doing some of these and what are we doing? And I mean, what are your perspectives and what are your suggestions on how perhaps the value of some of these levers get communicated uh, to the workforce? Uh, thank you so much. Imrana, uh, this is for you. I cannot change any more places or country. I'm very well settled out here. I change my name. My name. Is James, and I will say nothing. Especially after. Go ahead, go ahead, Rana. Sorry, especially after you gave the long definite uh, definition of your name. Uh, thank you so much for correcting. No worries. No worries. Um, happens to people you know who are working with uh, a lot of their colleagues overseas as well so maha a great question see what really is happening today is a strange thing a uh, lot of work is done by Ogap and ben does it really really uh, uh, do people really feel the effect of all that is being done and somewhere i i believe First of all, I think this word compensation is a very dumb word. It's, it's a terrible word because I... See, compensation comes from the word called compensate. It's almost like I somebody is compensating me for the hard work that I put in when I get to the office. And in return, there is somebody who gives something to me. So they are compensating me for the work. 
and we all believe that we are never well compensated because we always believe that we give more than what we receive so it's a it's 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 one word that's got to move away so what i think we ought to be doing is call it total rewards the moment you call it total rewards you got the more you got the benefit of one saying it is total which means there's a whole pile of stuff under that rewards is more to do with well this performance somewhere in this reward is also uh does it tie in and you said that earlier maha about does it tie in with the overall strategic objective of an organization so are we really doing this right so the moment you have answers to it then the word total rewards will fall in place so total rewards of course will have uh, uh by the way i like the word salaries why is salary important to me because salary is a little more banal inane neutral word so salary is good so get to salary so beyond salary there is something called the performance pay so as the word suggests we got to let people know what this performance pay is about and it's got to be crystal clear wherever there is ambiguity on hey why am i paid less than the other person by the way all happiness in this world around this word compensation is because it's not about what i get it's about what the other person gets so if we have a good communication plan which says and everybody understands it to the last level that this is total rewards total rewards has the following components you'll have salary at one end you'll have benefits and a whole host of thing around your personal growth some of the unsaid in organizations small organizations large organization is the amount of investment that is made in learning and development and training people to become leaders of tomorrow humongous work at a skill level so much of work goes in in trying to make a person relevant not just for today but for tomorrow as well where does that figure in we got to find a way to communicate that so whenever we do these road shows around total rewards thoughtfully add the stuff that is being done by an organization then people sit back and say oh yes this is just not about what i am re- receiving as rupees and cents but something a, a, a lot more beyond all of that last but not the least we underrate this completely what does it mean to belong to an organization such as and you can put your organization's name somewhere out there we all belong to a brand when you say you belong to a brand what does that mean what are you willing to give up and what are you willing to take the moment you start to think the investment that an organization is making and then you put this out as total rewards somewhere people start to uh, put pieces in place what value will you put in the last 12 months of the effort every organization people who are on the call and beyond that they have done to ensure the safety of their people wherever they are the countless number of calls that have been made and by the way you don't have to advertise it people know about it but just this word called care which comes in total rewards is absolutely important care some of these are subliminal but some of these are patent for example there have been a lot of example that you have cited um parents are covered by um by medical at deloitte we also cover parents in law why is this being done and by the way we we try to do this only because of a reason we feel if this is a family and the uh, and if there is a a woman who is working with us how nice it will be for that woman to also feel that yes my in-laws are covered and if it's a male to feel that there is a larger family and the organization is taking care of that so there is a way of putting this out to people calling this total rewards and calling out all the subtleties around this and not just keeping it to trite compensation and benefits because then in the list of benefits you will say these are all the things that are being done but there is a whole host of things that are done beyond it a gentle reference to it once a while really helps people 
because then they start to appreciate the value of what is coming their way. Okay, with this, Imrana, I'm going to ask you this. Um, Maha referred to something called gig. So, do you do you believe that this is going to gather currency? Are you looking at something in your organization? Any views about that, Maha? Of course, you can also chime in. So, anything around gig and uh, the strategies around that, yes. as it relates to total rewards. Uh, yes, Nathan, you've kind of bought in um, a very important dimension to the future of work that I think most uh, of the HR fraternity is today discussing about. Uh, so gig has been there in in small uh, uh, portion in our um, working system, but probably it's again an area where there is a lot of accelerated thinking that's happening right now. Uh, so that the reason uh, why I believe the thinking has got accelerated is because we've enjoyed the flexibility of working from home and realize that things don't drop. Uh, things continue, businesses continue delivering on their PNL. So the, I think there's increased confidence in being able to uh, experiment with more roles. Uh, second is also uh, all of us are always are looking for creative solutions in enhancing our uh, in, uh, diversity, equity and inclusion. And there are several researchers which point out that, uh, you know, if you are able to employ higher degree of flexibility at workplace, it directly uh, helps you to contribute to this agenda. So I think from multiple lenses, it is an, a domain that can be explored for uh, seeing how it can add value uh, to the business. So we are doing it. Um, however, at the same time, uh, and, and good news is that there are many uh, new players like Upwork is one of them uh, who we have been utilizing even in the past. But uh, there are more players that are coming also in providing platform for gig. Um, so I think right now it's still at an experimentation mode. I wouldn't say that we have uh, taken a big leap in that direction, but our intent is to kind of really uh, big, uh, you know, leverage uh, this in our org design. Excellent. Excellent. Maha? Yeah, look, I mean, let me uh, uh, perhaps build um, and start with, before I go to the reward elements and you know how how we are approaching rewards for gig workers, maybe get back to a definition of gig. You know, and I think we are experimenting in three or four ways. Uh, one is, you know, perhaps. In fact, the pandemic has been fantastic. Uh, I mean, it has in some ways. Uh, you know, Imrana mentioned future of work. I mean, it has brought that future of work into now. You know, and kind of really enabled us to do so many experiments. So. The first format, very simply, is flexi working. You know, where geography is not relevant, you can work from anywhere. Remote work, and I think uh, anyone who had a doubt that it is possible, I think the pandemic forced us to realize that it is possible. And as we looked at geography agnostic roles, I think uh, location specific allowances became something that we are really reviewing in our full time workforce. So let me keep that as party easiest. Okay, then let's look at the second, which to my mind is the real definition of a gig worker which is really to say let's employ people who we do not need uh, for five days a week uh, you know full working hours etc etc and it's a fantastic way for us uh, back to you know the role of rewards to really look at our workforce construct you know which kind of roles really need a full time employee and which which can be done with uh, you know with lesser investment of time and that's a fantastic way and i saw a question in the chat box uh, you know from professor sahai asking how can we really you know optimize cost here is a fantastic way because the minute you kind of find ways to get that work done with a gig talent could there be a way you can find efficient and effective ways of doing the same and I'll come back on that. The third way is we've been experimenting with gig uh, is really to say, okay, just as we say we can open out project employment, can we open out projects for internal colleagues? So it's an internal gig, you know, so that people get curated shaping experiences for their development. And that's another thing that we are kind of, you know, playing with. Now let's come back to the core gig, you know, which is colleagues who are working not full time uh, and pay for that talent to my mind depends on one big variable, which is to say, are we really looking at gig because I don't need a resource for full time because of the nature of work that I'm getting done. 
in which case it's a efficiency and cost driver okay uh, we are still i think as a country and as an industry figuring other than fixed pay and variable pay what does it mean in terms of benefits and culture when a colleague is not working only for you but working for multiple companies you know and legally what are some of the constraints that you need to put within that for compete non compete etc the other very interesting element of gig which to my mind we should really leverage to propel growth is rare skill sets you know so sometimes so let's take examples let's take a business which is going ipo but cannot afford a full time cfo you know uh, or let's take our own example as we go into a digital enterprise or becoming a fully digital enterprise uh, we felt we could actually get an high end data scientist to do a lot of data analytics for us now that resource is a niche resource which perhaps would get paid more than pro rata of salary cost for a certain number of days you know and therefore pay and benefit goes very differently depending on which end of the spectrum are you really utilizing that gig for and those have been i think some of our experiments with gig at mondelez What about you, Mr. Nathan? I think Deloitte is actually consulting with so many firms on how gig can be paid, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Any experiments within Deloitte? So, um, see, uh, gig I think has been as um, as old as the Himalayas. This is not a concept which is new. In the in the good old days, when you needed a skill which was not available, you just bought that skill. brought that skill over and once that skill had discharged that particular duty the person possessing that skill then that person went away uh, good old days i mean even now you recognize that if a carpenter comes home or if there's an electrician comes home that is no different from a gig today because you don't need that person full time with you all the time something that you refer to maha what we are trying to do is we are trying to look at gig by the way the skills that people possess are very specialized highly valued in the market and is there a way that we we will not be able to get everybody trained on those kinds of skills and it is expensive so the better so what we are trying to do is in the world of tomorrow we foresee a certain percentage of our people to be gig workers and we've got that percentage out and we believe that this is what has got to be done in an organization because if the if the world is moving at such a a a, a pace on technology just to even keep pace with it is going to be very very difficult for any organization so we will be well advised to look at a gig model where we say okay certain percentage of our people we will keep as gig and then we will do all the core part of the of the work that is being done that said how much do we pay them you are absolutely right the question is you cannot say okay the value of this job if i have to hire a full person is so and so they will work for so many hours so per hour rate is so and so no you certainly got to put a a value over and above that and then keep that person the the question today is not as much as about gig as to how effectively these people will be used in organization the one around culture i will not touch because that can go on for a very long time so with this let me move on to um something different any new technology that you have introduced recently in your own workspace maha amrana Yeah, you know, I mean, lots. Uh, do you mean specifically in HR and specifically yeah, pay yeah, rewards? Yes, yeah. yeah, so, I mean, we 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 perhaps like many other organizations introduced an end-to-end, -end, uh, you know, tech platform. So we've just gone live on Workday, and as we experiment with Workday, I think we realize, uh, you know, back to the question that you were answering, Ms. Nathan, uh, how do we really use that to do two things: empower line managers to be decision makers when it comes to managing where to invest and where to manage costs uh, to you know really equipping everyone to understand the full potential of that total reward uh, so that you know in a single frame they are able to see pay benefit stock uh, variable pay upside on variable pay you know and likewise with sales incentives uh, we have equipped our frontline sales teams to be able to dynamically see how is their earning going 
how is it going with their top five? You know, so that there's a degree of uh, you know impetus to Depends. kind of try and want uh, yeah propel for doing a little more. Uh, you know, with that competitive spirit that kicks in in any uh, any kind of a leaderboard. Uh, we've also appified, uh, you know, just like what Imrana was sh- sharing, appified a lot of our wellness initiatives, uh, which is helping us. Uh, go back in a very segmented way, you know, instead of saying, okay, here is wellness, you know, everyone put on your Fitbit and start running and, you know, show us your steps, Uh, really saying, okay, here are two locations where uh, cardio issues are more, you know, and perhaps we need to kind of provide, uh, you know, more support with uh, counseling on preventive uh, there versus here is one cohort where, you know, I think there is a lot of appetite to perhaps experiment with fun ways of, uh, you know, learning how to get into financial wellness. Um, and where are people really hesitant to come out and talk about emotional wellness? So I think a lot of uh, uh, anonymous spot polling, pulse surveys have been in other ways. So these are not high end uh, bot driven technology, but this is leveraging some simple tools to really ensure that the impact that rewards uh, in its entirety can deliver is being managed uh, effectively. I think those are top three that struck me as uh, as I heard your question. Excellent. Rana? Yeah, I think uh, uh, like Maha mentioned, we also use Workday and it's it's like a, uh, we feel that it's extremely user friendly. Um, and uh, apart from that, what we have done specifically in the pandemic is launched apps. Uh, so apps from a wellness point of view that I mentioned about the kind of... Uh, have a wellness app which allow you to reimburse th- your your gym reimbursement equipments uh, through the app. At the same time, it it can measure. You can participate in competition which are like walks, and you know you compete with other teams. Uh, so it actually engages uh, people together. So it's called Cast Light. So I think that's one uh, app which uh, which has got uh, steam in the pandemic. Uh, the other thing that we have done is that we always had uh, an, an analytics, HR analytics platform, uh, but we have upgraded that platform to make it even more user friendly. And uh, that got launched du- during the pandemic. Uh, so I think uh, getting database insights becomes such uh, you know powerful feeder to our reward strategies. Uh, so our uh, reward professionals are able to better leverage that tool. And second is from a user experience employee experience point of view we are trying to leverage the power of apps wonderful um the only thing that i can add is of course we are uh, all organizations will have their own ways um we have introduced success factors the the key i think in any of the technology that is being introduced is is it simple is it usable is it something that stokes interest and just given that 85% of our people are millennials, it puts a humongous pressure on all of us to ensure relevance and uh, the target audience that we have. Even simple things like, how are we doing compared to the rest of the pack is important. So anyways, with this, let me, let me go on to one more question, then we get on to the rapid fire. Um, HR costs are really rising and there's always uh, um, a finance person looking at us and saying, hey, I think it's getting to a point where it's becoming difficult. How do we manage this rising cost and recognize that there is a rising expectation and to just balance those two requires a, a, a lot of thought. So what are your insights? What are you doing? So, Maha, you can go first or Imrana, whoever. <laughs> yeah, okay. So uh, let me go first, uh, Nathan. Um, so uh, you're, you're right, I think, and that's the reason why um, we keep uh, getting reminded that we need to think like uh, finance, finance uh, professionals in, in the way we run our functions. We need to think like marketing professionals, the way that we run our employer branding strategies. So I think... Uh, there's definitely an opportunity for us uh, to uh, to kind of deepen uh, that aspect. But how, the way we do it uh, in our organization is uh, we're 
obviously as the custodian of the employee cost and in and and its implications on uh, on the pnl and uh, so that's a conscious effort uh, to look at uh, predictive analytics like running simulations on how it's going to be uh, in the next not just next year but the year after as, as we do our org design processes uh, as we propose uh, changes to our reward strategies what does it mean to that employee cost and how are things uh, shifting so i think we are able to bring in insights to the table which helps us to make a a, a, a more uh, you know stronger decisions but at the same time i think uh, keeping the philosophy in mind because there, these are also investment there are two ways of looking at the word cost Uh, they are also investment in our people so uh, you know they also give returns and sometimes these re- returns are uh, intangible and 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 it takes time for us to uh, really get those returns back and that's why uh, we can't really absolutely look at them in numbers in isolation so there is that philosophy behind it and and there is that uh, roi which we all expect out of our people resources so keeping that spirit in mind but yes being mindful of how the cost implications are going to be how is the roi going to be on this investments why are we doing what are we doing and having greater conviction but uh, with the power of predictive analytics i think that's uh, that's what we do and also benchmark with uh, external partners they are such great reservoir of insights because they see the world a lot larger than we do so we rely heavily on consultants who help like your your company uh, hewitt all of these partners help us to uh, make better informed decisions nana thank you for your business and so uh, let me say something that you have said uh, is very interesting i think it's as much as we talk about all of this you are doing comparisons um one of the things that we find of value is listening to just the voice um sometimes uh, look look at what has happened during the pandemic uh, last year there was a bit of a squeeze why otherwise enterprises will find it difficult to pay their people i would rather keep people with me than to shed people so if the organization like ours had taken a clear view like that that look we will protect our people will keep them with us and if you paying them a, a tad low it's perfectly okay and even if we say we will we will not pay ourselves as partners it's absolutely fine and uh, somewhere along the way during about uh, around the month of december jan we heard some rumblings hey uh, it is getting to be tough it's getting to be so what did we do we found that hey things were were also getting to be better in the marketplace and is there anything that we do just to put out a signal to our employees that we care so immediately we rolled out uh, we called it special unfortunately we didn't call it total rewards we called it a uh, special compensation and um, and if, whatever be that percentage but it really really was received very well because they said hey this is an organization that is starting to listen to us when we need it the most we always listen to our people there's always a lot of surveys that happen we get the voice of what's happening on the floor but this is the time when they need it that the most i also know that right around the corner we have another revision coming up but how do you do things in a timely way yeah. that addresses the voice i know that we yeah. have um a uh, few questions let me just very quickly get into a rapid fire question then we'll open it up to everybody so this Let's is a mini build on that mr nathan you know i mean i think both of you made some fantastic points i think if i could add just one point on top it is sure. perhaps this perspective of short term and long term you know uh, i think uh, and perhaps that's also why we have short term incentives and long term incentives right uh, i think there's such a powerful opportunity for us as we look at cost levers and investment levers to also use pay to focus the business to not just look at this quarter this month which is managed by sip and variable pay but also put in place efforts and start valuing the efforts uh, which can be linked to your long term incentives right and therefore having a long horizon set of measures and a short horizon set of measures is something that's really helped us uh, 
decide where to invest and where to juice out costs i'll stop with that excellent so this is rapid fire this shouldn't take more than 2 minutes so these are questions to the two of you um what's your favorite book or movie it should be easy yeah so for me it's life is beautiful you know uh jewish father reimagining reality and uh, helping the family go through okay nazi camps <laughs> yeah and uh, imrana the pursuit of happiness will smith favorite actor and it's about a child so mm-hmm. both the reasons wonderful for me it's shashank redemption ah. and uh, three idiots so <laughs> if you had one advice for comp and bend specialists or total reward specialists what would that be one advice quick one business intimacy keep growing it excellent ha uh-huh. measure impact don't just launch initiatives excellent and for me it is be strategic um uh, high potentials or high performer both amrana yes different needs but uh, mm. they both are important for the business excellent i'm going to ask you a personal question i hope you're okay with that um do you think that you are adequately compensated <laughs> the only reason we never ever do an employee engagement survey which says what is your rating on pay is exactly this it's never enough right emrana <laughs> <laughs> i would be surprised if there is any, anybody who answers differently <laughs> okay i will answer differently i think i'm overpaid um but seriously the, the the point is just what the two of you made this is important because this really tells us why this is important that we communicate the value of all that we receive because we are looking at pay and i just put you and i put you in a bit of a corner there hey, what motivates your cfo okay a healthy pnl uh yeah <laughs> okay emrana i think financial performance both short term long term okay excellent um so two of you a regret hey by the way all this is in the context of the subject huh <laughs> yeah before we get too philosophical exactly <laughs> <laughs> no but i would say that you know as much as one talks of investing in uh, work in family uh, i think uh, investing in my own health and my own well being uh, is something that i could have done more on earlier on now i do it late but not lost i think true financial planning uh, focusing it not just for uh, all our employees i mean that's an area where probably we could have done more how about you uh my regret has always been that we have not helped people through understanding the true value and i think we can do far far more yeah. and a uh, a hope the last one a hope this lessons of this pandemic last for the next century thanks what an answer wonderful <laughs> my hope is for a really happy and a healthy world so as they say in sanskrit loka samasta sukhino bhavantu you know so that's my hope how about yours okay my hope is for a lot of healthy um incredibly happy and um i think the the last word that i would have is content people mm mm-hmm. so anyways power to all three hopes on that <laughs> i love, love the content one right that's so so uh, perhaps that's where the essence of happiness also lies so exactly <laughs> okay with this i know that we may not have too much time for the q and a's which we had promised we'll have more time but let's try to make the best of it so we are now going to throw this open to people who are on the call for asking questions so people this is for everybody 
for all the attendees any question that you may have okay so there are many questions let me read out one for you mr nathan because it's addressed to you it says to mr nathan all yeah. the discussion we are in we are having is in general for white collar jobs so any tips for managing blue collar millennials with aspirations to the moon and qualifications from basic experience need some suggestions oh yeah the uh, first of all i i'm i'm afraid i'm not able to see that in my chat window um yeah i, I think today the biggest value that we can give to a blue collar uh, staff is to make sure that they are employable for future making them future ready through skilling through investment in their learning and in their development i think anything that we can do and more would be insufficient so that is what we need to focus on okay um oh, uh, uh, there are uh, uh, pardon me for the interruption this is manu here there are lots of questions which the audience have asked of all of you oh, okay uh, this is the uh, this is okay the q and a tab yes okay okay what qualifies as a gig worker that got responded so i won't go there uh, how do we ensure rnr signifies the appropriate acknowledgement appreciation incentivization etc healthy competition environment in an organization and continue to stay back um praveen this is a fantastic question because we didn't touch upon rnr and i think your question comes right so maha or imrana would you want to take a stab at this yeah i wouldn't mind yet i mean i would say look while we keep talking of value i think the essence of it is in are you transparent are you clear on your principles and have we communicated that principles of why are we doing what are we doing because very often the dissonance happens when there is a felt sense of either lack of fair play or lack of why are we doing all this you know and i think uh, all three of us mentioned that important need for listening if you're solving the voice of either the business or the employee are able to communicate the why usually it is the easiest thing to do thereafter yeah in rana bills yeah. yeah just just like you said i love the way mini build um arena uh, it's it i mean we as reward professionals can create platforms can do uh, so much with the technology and the experience etc but the spirit is really how line managers are utilizing those platforms and what are they differentiating as great performance i think there is a huge amount of uh, energy that needs to go in also building line manager capability to be able to do that yes. okay Th this is a question uh says so question to mr nathan how could organization focus on effective engagement for employees um i remember the good old days when i was in manufacturing and i've been in manufacturing for a significant part of my life and the only thing that we did in those days was to walk the floor it's a very simple exercise you just have to you have to do nothing spend at least a minimum of 4 hours and uh, spend a, a few hours in the cafeteria we used to call it the canteen in those days and uh, do nothing just sit at people's table and then they will talk to you you can always ask them questions you can come away with a wealth of knowledge uh today we do this through surveys there is such a lot of survey fatigue that sets in that they don't want to see another survey people want to speak they don't want to type in responses so the most effective way if you have to engage your people is to listen to them and there are several listening for us sometimes it's difficult to speak when your boss is in that same forum so find ways to have cohorts of people very regularly on fridays throw it open i mean i try to do it every friday if not every friday every alternate friday we have um one where we throw it on to a certain section of a business and says come on um what is the top most question on your mind and they would ask difficult questions for which we may not have answers but it is important to find the answer then go back to that person and in full cry of everybody either declare to them yes you have done something about it or you cannot do anything about it or if you cannot do it do it in a certain period of time once you are honest about it 
then people will start to speak and they will feel more engaged the the other thing is take suggestions from people seriously don't the, it's not another one i mean in all the manufact i mean in the, the the manufacturing company that i worked in and the services another there was a lot of focus on just listening and again this is through personal interaction so anything that you can create as a forum listening forum they will start you have to go back and say you said this this is how we have responded typically all communication that comes from any organization is hey we are introducing this we are introducing this we are introducing this where we actually said we heard you and owed to that we are introducing this thank you for your suggestion valued contribution the moment you do that then people will start to say hey this is different and they will th- that's when people will go- want to go that extra mile so um there is another question in what manner different strategy um can be applied to higher potential employees in process driven manufacturing organizations so ma or emrana you want to take this okay sure uh, thanks emrana so i would say look firstly i wouldn't really uh, really say it's going to be so different for a process driven manufacturing company i work both for a paper company and a pharma company i can assure you that what i saw in the professional services company where i started my life is similar a high potential usually wants to be treated special you know i think that's really where it starts and ends now understanding what does special mean for each sub segment within that like a marketer does segmentation for you to segment your consumer or your talent to understand what does special mean for them uh, and pivot towards that uh, and give them those options is important and let me take two quick super quick examples you know one i would say uh, some look for uh, fame recognition acknowledgement some look for quicker learning opportunity some look for money and of course if everyone had their way everything we want all of it but usually there is a stack rank knowing that stack rank for your high potentials is very important and the business leaders being very close to the high potentials is very important that's what secondly from a hardcore pay perspective i would say that classically i would invest in long term ring fencing and long term um, stock plans psps etc with my high potentials and with my high performers i'll ensure that their increment their base uh, uh, you know annual uh, incentive etc etc talks with their performers and of course there is high performer and high potential that really really rare few you got to do everything you can to kind of ensure that uh, in a very transparent way people know why you're treating them differently but you treat them differently excellent excellent hey we are on top of the hour there are several questions and i am sure that the moment you start to respond to one uh, you would but have to look at the others also in queue um as as they say all good things come to an end and uh here i would say all get all good things get to an even better thing coming up so with this i'm going to turn it over to the organizers and thank them for having us on the panel thanks everybody mr natan thank you so much for sharing your insights and so wonderfully moderating the session ms mahalakshmi and ms imrana sheik thanks for sharing your enriching thoughts and views we thank and acknowledge the presence of mr ms manuwadwa and mr sy siddiqui with this we come to an end of this current session